self splicing introns uh, a very characteristic type of uh, uh, post transcriptional modification uh, that uh, essentially talks about uh, introns as rna molecules able to splice itself out from the pre mrna what are the learning outcomes of the session uh, one will definitely be able to study the splicing pathways that have revealed that there are introns that can splice themselves out of the mrna on their own without the help of any proteins or spliceosome machinery for that matter no snrps are involved in the process of splicing these out there are two well self uh, studied uh, self splicing introns group 1 and group 2 introns which along with the spliceosome pre mrna splicing comprises the three classes of rna splicing the structural aspects of these introns help them in carrying out the two transesterification re reactions required for splicing these self splicing introns are believed to mediated only one round of rna processing although the catalytic action is attributed to the rna itself so there are many reports that suggest that these although have catalytic actions cannot be considered as uh, enzymes however there are some uh, self splicing introns that have been converted into true ribosome ribozymes and they function like enzymes thereof so let us look at the overall picture of the splicing mechanism to understand the fact that these group Uh, these uh, self splicing introns also carry out splicing in a similar manner so we know that if a gene has uh, uh, coding regions as well as the non coding regions then it is these non coding regions which are essentially the introns and they are removed through the process of splicing so when these genes are transcribed the rna also contains the entire sequence of coding and the non coding regions and thereafter through splicing generally the non coding regions are removed and the exons come together and are joined together through ester bonds to form a functional mrna uh, wherein the 5 prime cap is added and the poly a tail is also added so a processed rna with introns removed is what remains making it a functional mrna now self splicing Uh, there are two groups of uh, well studied uh, self splicing introns and they are the group 1 and the group 2 introns of course both group 1 and group 2 introns are in terms of abundance rare when compared with the spliceosome machinery yet they are found especially in organeller uh, uh, systems where uh, splicing uh, 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 is through self splicing introns now group 2 introns have a very similar function as that of the spliceosome machinery as you can observe in this uh, most group 2 introns okay have uh, a highly specified and a conserved a as part of the branch point just as in uh, introns that are recognized by the spliceosome machinery and the uh, highly conserved a has a 2 prime oh group which acts as a nucleophile it has or these introns have 5 prime splice site and they also have 3 prime splice site so the branch point a is able to carry out the first transesterification reaction as observed over here and since the oh binds to the 5 prime end of the intron they are in a nester bond so having broken one nester bond a new ester bond is formed over here which means that the intron becomes a lariat this is again very similar to the introns that are removed by spliceosome machinery and then the 3 prime oh end of the exon 1 is able to carry out a nucleophilic attack on the on the 3 prime end of the intron that is a 3 prime splice site to ensure that this oh forms a ester bond with the 5 prime end of exon 2 bringing the two exons together and what leaves is the self splicing intron therefore these group 2 introns are very similar to the introns that are removed by spliceosome machinery in fact when a lot of studies were carried out 
with respect to the structural aspects of the uh, group 2 introns it was found that these group 2 introns are folded into a very specific and conserved secondary structure as you can see the folding is such that there are several domains like domain 1 domain 2 domain 3 domain 4 domain 5 and domain 6 formed of all these domains domain 5 and 6 are responsible for uh, carrying out the first transesterification reaction while the other domains are involved in the second transesterification reaction by ensuring that the pre prime oh end of the exon 1 is able to carry out the nucleophilic attack on exon 2. What is also interesting to note is that domain 4 of the group 2 introns has an open reading frame. What do we understand by open reading frame? When an RNA has a start codon and has a stop codon, then that can be read by the ribosomes to give rise to a translated product. Interestingly, what has been observed is that these translated products enable the group 2 introns to move from one size, one, one place of a genome to another place or from one genome to another genome. So basically, these can act as genetically genetic mobile elements, what is also called as transposons. And it is observed in many cases that the, um, the uh, translated products are responsible for what is called as reverse transcription and therefore reverse tra uh, therefore many of these act as what is called as retrotransposons. Therefore, this concept of the fact that the uh, group 2 introns not just have a catalytic activity but they can also act as mobile genetic element seems to have an evolutionary role to play in eukaryotes. Interestingly, group 2 introns are very scarce in prokaryotic system and when in prokaryotic system, they seem to function only as genetic mobile elements. They hardly have a role to play in uh, post-transcriptional modification because in prokaryotic systems, post-transcriptional mo modifications are close to being not there. So therefore, whatever group 2 introns have been found in the prokaryotic system, they seem to have been acting as a mobile genetic element and as mobile genetic element, they have uh, observed to play an evolutionary role. Now, uh, as mentioned earlier, the domain 5 and the domain 6 have an important role to play in uh, the um, first transesterification reaction. So what is observed is that uh, the domain 6 and the domain 5, okay, the domain 6 has the highly conserved A and it is positioned in such a way that it is close to the 5 prime end of the intron. So, this becomes exon 1. Secondly, the positioning of the domain 6 also ensures that exon 2 is very close to exon 1. So, here what is important is that the folding of the intron has ensured that the highly conserved A of the branch point is close to the 5 prime end of the intron and the exon 1 itself is very close to exon 2. So therefore, uh, the intron due to its folding is able to bring close to each other the important parts of the intron that carry out the transesterification reaction. So what is therefore observed is that the A the 2 prime OH of the A is able to carry out its nucleophilic attack on the G of the 5 prime end of the intron. Thereby, the A will be in a trans uh, is will be an ester bond with the 5 prime end of the intron. So, what is formed over here is a lariat, as you can see. Once this lariat has been formed, so this is typically what is formed. Once that lariat is formed, the 3 prime OH end of the exon 1, which is close to exon 2, is able to carry out the second nucleophilic attack such that the 3 prime end of the intron is uh, the bond, the ester bond between the 3 prime end of the intron and the exon 2 is broken and in place the 3 prime OH end of the exon 1 is forming the ester bond with exon 2 bringing exon 1 and exon 2 and joining them together to form a continuous system while this entire intron is removed with part of it being a lariat. So therefore, 
this intron that is group 2 intron is removed as a lariat itself thus you can look at all these aspects being very similar to the introns that are removed by the spliceosome machinery so therefore the said thing is that it is these group 2 introns that have evolved to become the spliceosome to become the introns that are actually spliced out by the spliceosome machinery so these have actually been uh, 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 binding to you know proteins etc to form the final uh, structure so that it uh, is removed by the spliceosome machinery then we go on to the next group of introns which is the group 1 intron and this group 1 intron has a different splicing mechanism uh, than the uh, group 2 introns now when one looks at the structure of group 1 introns one again is able to see that the folding of the group 1 intron is very characteristic into highly conserved regions so there are certain regions of the group 1 intron which are very highly conserved and certain which are less conserved but the folding into this particular structure makes it work or makes it a self splicing intron as you can see there are several domains that are formed because of the specific conserved rna uh, structure which is a secondary structure so group 1 introns are generally smaller than the group 2 introns and the mechanism also is different however there have been some giant group 1 introns too that are present group 1 introns like mentioned have a conserved secondary structure with some regions being highly conserved and much of the sequence is involved or needed for its functioning in splicing there are group reports of group 1 intron 2 being genetic mobile elements especially integrating into genes that are intronless now let us look at the process of splicing with regard to not the spliceosome machinery but the group 1 introns so uh, what is interesting to note is that the group 1 intron has a very characteristic pocket and this pocket is able to specifically bind to uh, guanine nucleotides now this could be either gtp or it could be nucleosides and in many and in very rare cases but it can also be just the guanine however this pocket is such that it holds a guanine nucleotide and interestingly it is this guanine nucleotide that acts as a nucleophile through its 3 prime oh group because this guanine nucleotide is not in a uh, phosphodiester bond with the other nucleotides in the group 1 intron it has its 3 prime oh free and this 3 prime oh acts as a nucleophile but interestingly what has been observed is that this pocket is always positioned close to the 5 prime splice site of the intron and this bringing of the pocket close to the 5 prime splice site of the intron is another characteristic sequence which is called as the internal guide sequence so this internal guide sequence is able to bring the uh, so the guide sequence is able to bind to a sequence very close to the 5 prime splice site thus positioning the 5 prime splice site close to the pocket that holds the guanine nu nucleotide now therefore this oh uh, carries out the transesterification reaction and the g will now be in an ester bond with the 5 prime end of the intron so the g is going to leave the pocket of the intron okay and instead bind to the 5 prime end of the guanine uh, sorry 5 prime end of the intron so therefore the first transesterification reaction takes place and then the second esterification reaction that is a 3 prime oh of this exon will uh, cut here so carry out the nucleophilic attack here with the second exon and so the exon 1 is now bound to the exon 2 while the intron is removed not as a lariat but as a linear uh, intron so you can see that the two uh, so the uh, the the guanine that is present uh, in was present in the uh, pocket is now bound to the 5 prime end of the intron so you can see that the intron now carries an extra g at its 5 prime end but there is no lariat formation over here 
it is released more or less as a linear intron. So therefore, the mechanism is quite different from that of the group two in uh, group two introns. Now. Let's make the conclusions, therefore, the folded structures of the cell splicing introns into domains enables them to function as ribozymes, although many consider it as only a one-time catalytic activity, and they are also observed to have genetic mobile elements. The introns have conserved 5' splice site, 3' splice site, and a branch point A in group 2 introns, which are also hallmarks of introns that can be recognized by the spliceosome machinery. So there is a marked uh, similarity with the group two introns and those introns that are that are uh, spliced out by spliceosome machinery, bringing into a, um, a concept that the group two introns have evolved to become those in introns that are spliced by the spliceosome machinery. The group one introns have a different splicing pathway as it uses a G nucleotide in a pocket of the intron itself to carry out its transesterification reaction and the intron released is linear and not in the lariat form. These introns seem to have an evolutionary function in eukaryotes. Thus, group 1 and group 2 introns with a defined and conserved secondary structure have domains that enable true transesterification reactions to splice out themselves from the RNA. Thank you.